in listen-only mode. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Matt Rubinoff, Executive Director of Center for Student Opportunity. Um, it's, it's my job to uh, welcome everybody today. Thank you for uh, taking the time out of your busy schedules to, to join us um, and to introduce today's uh, webinar. Um, I'm joined by my colleague, Krista D'Amelio, who, who should be a familiar name uh, to most of you by now. Um, she's our uh, our liaison with uh, with college partners um, and is, is going to be taking the reins uh, of this webinar uh, shortly um, to walk you through the the new and improved uh, I'm first.org um, I'm gonna make a few remarks and, and then have to hop off uh, onto another webinar so um, you'll be in good hands with with Krista um, she'll she'll walk you through um, the, the college partner user experience on I'm First and, and, and leave some time to, to, to field your questions. Um, but I thought it would be helpful uh, to start with uh, offering a little bit of context for, for why this work is, is so important um, and even more important uh, since uh, the First Lady's speech last week and, and we now know the, the White House has kind of made a, renew, a renewed focus on college access and, and completion for low-income students and, and, and is really making the case for, for why we think uh, there's something special about being the first in your family to attend and, and graduate from college. 30% uh, of students enrolled in post-secondary institutions today are first-generation college students. 24% are both low-income and first-gen. That's about three and a half million students uh, total. But 89% of these students, or nine out of every 10, uh, will not earn a bachelor's degree by the age of 24. We believe strongly that the issue is not so much that first generation college students lack the, the motivation or the qualification for college, uh, but simply that they are, are lacking access to good information um, and, and to support to navigate the college process and, and to access the colleges, you guys, um, that are most committed to their success. Uh, and so that's where I'm first uh, comes in. Uh, since 2006, Center for Student Opportunity has been partnering with colleges and universities to support your efforts on behalf of first generation college students and, and we've created tools uh, to help first gens in the college search and application process. And we've learned two things along the way. One is, is that popular college search websites and guidebooks just aren't cutting it for first-generation college students. And second, uh, that as much as well-meaning counselors, teachers, and mentors want to help, at the end of the day, students are responding most to their peers uh, to motivate them in their pursuit of college. So that's why we created I'm First. Uh, we're built, we've built an online community that is celebrating first-generation college students and supporting the next generation of students who are working hard to reach that goal. Uh, this has been a, a labor of love for, for the better part of, of the past year. Uh, we were lucky enough to uh, win um, a grant competition sponsored by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation called the College Knowledge Challenge, uh, and that has supported um, the development uh, of this uh, of this online campaign and web app um, for the past six months or so, and uh, as part of that grant, uh, officially launched uh, last month. Um, so uh, we, um, with that launch, uh, introduced a new landing page, a new user interface, um, and some cool uh, new features and functionality, um, both for our student and supporter users as well as for our college partners. Um, so uh, we're excited to, uh, to to walk you guys through all of that today and get you fami more familiar with, uh, with how uh, you guys as college partners can be uh, utilizing uh, I'm First uh, in support of uh, your efforts on behalf of first generation college students. Um, so with that, I'm going to uh, turn it over to, to Krista to, to take it away. 
Thank you, Matt, and thank you, everyone, for joining us. I'm really excited to be able to give you a demonstration of the new interface that we created um, with the dashboard for you. I'm going to log in to um, a dummy account that I have uh, established to show you all of the different features. This account is accessible um, and for full partners, and so the features that you will be viewing is the dashboard for full partners. Um, if you are an associate partner and if you have any questions about some of the features that you're seeing, uh, here today, please do not hesitate to contact me at any time. Um, also, if you notice that you may not have a user account registered under I'm First as a college partner as well, please do not hesitate to contact me at any time, and I'm happy to set you up with that. So if some of you um, were able to log in and, and notice the new interface, and for those of you, if this is the first time seeing it, um, it, it looks different, <laughs> obviously, from what uh, we previously have. Um, the dashboard and the metrics up top are still the same, but as you can see, we have now incorporated exporting features um, that many of you have requested um, to be able to uh, export the information that we have available to you via the dashboard um, here. And so one of the things that I want to point to you first and foremost is to please um, edit and update the information on your I'm First profiles. You can do that simply by going to the top of the screen, going on the drop down button, and going to edit and update your profile. And we try to make it as user friendly as possible. Um, if you need any uh, cheat sheets of the information that the profile is asking you for, I'm also happy to follow up with a list of all of the information that the profile asks for. Um, but as you can see here, it's a series of drop-down boxes where you could simply input your institution's information to update the profile. Um, this is the most important thing I can ask of you as a college partner right now as we're recruiting more students to sign up and utilize I'm First in their college search. Uh, we want to make sure that all of the information that is accessible to our students is relevant and up to date. And also at any time during the webinar, if you have a specific question about a feature that I'm going through, please do not hesitate to submit it and I'll receive it in the question box and I can answer all of your questions at the end. So aside from edit editing and updating the profile, um, if you have a liaison or a colleague within your institution that will be responsible for helping you to manage the data on I'm First, also in this drop-down portion, you can add as many users um, as you'd like. And so you simply do that by adding in their email address. Your colleague will receive uh, an email from our dashboard on I'm First inviting them to create a password to set up their user account. And so that will also give them access to the dashboard. Going back to the main dashboard, up top we still have the metrics for profile views as you can see here. Um, we have over 2,500 of those community-based organizations, college access programs, youth serving organizations, pre-college prep partner schools available to you. And then we also still have the students interested functionality. In accordance with our students' interested functionality, you will now be receiving an email notification every time a new student shows interest in your institution. Um, going to the college profile that we have for you, when students are able to access your page and they see um, that this could be a good fit for them and they want to receive more information, they simply click this I'm interested button. And once they do that, all of the information that we've obtained from their student profiles then gets sent over to you. And not only now will you receive an email notifying you that a new student is interested and this is how you can reach out to them, but we, you will also still receive that running count of how many students out of the total number of students in our I'm First database have shown interest in you. Um, and following your requests, you are now not only able to export those interested students simply by clicking the, but the export button into Excel, but you are now ex able to export saved students that you are interested in specifically reaching out to. So going into our student database, full partners, um, I'm sure you've seen this, associate partners, maybe you have not seen this, but this is the database of all of our student users uh, who are registered under I'm First. And so the search features to filter uh, for those students that you're interested in connecting with has changed. Um, you're still able to filter by location, just you know, clicking certain metrics. 
uh, a specific major that students have shown interest uh, in that your institution also offers. And you can also do an advanced search. Um, you could narrow down students depending on their high school graduation year. If you're an all-female uh, institution and you want to just, uh, you know, obviously connect with females only, you can uh, filter in that search. If you're interested in reaching out to more targeted demographics for your institution, or if you want to get nitty-gritty and, um, you know, uh, filter those students specifically by um, SAT, ACT score, their high school GPA, you know, the admissions criteria that you know um, that are, these students are going to be able to be admitted into your institution. So once you filter in your, your search and you get a list of students that um, you're interested in, in connecting with, simply by clicking into a student's profile and pressing save, the information that we've obtained from the student profiles is now saved within the Excel sheet for you to export. And so once you are able to export all of the student information that we've obtained, their email address, their home phone number, their home address, as well as the self-reported demographics that they have, you can go back into the dashboard. And up top, simply by clicking Export Save Students, all of that information is now obtainable for you into Excel, for you to put into whichever database is convenient that your institution uses to communicate with students. Or you can also go on to Saved Items. And here we have all of your saved items organized, whether it be by students, organization saved, or questions. And again, you're able to export not only those interested students, but now also those saved students. Another feature that you may all be aware of um, as full partners is the export saved organizations. So our find organizations directory is accessible to our full partners. And this contains the information for our community-based organizations, our college access programs, charter schools, and other youth-serving organizations. So if you uh, know you're going on recruitment travels and you want to extend your reach beyond high, the high schools that you attend, we encourage you to use the database to do searches for where these, these community-based organizations are located, whether you want to get um, more in detail by doing program types as well, and to reach out to these organizations. I'm going to pull up a more uh, detailed profile of what a community-based organization looks like here for you and the information that is accessible to you. So this is what um, a community-based organization profile looks like. As you can see, we have a quick introduction of what the organization does, as well as certain metrics of the populations that they serve, their program services, and when they offer services. And to the right, we have the contact information of those individuals who would be your primary point of contact here. And so you're able to directly communicate with these institutions by uh, emailing them via the dashboard. And by pressing contact, it actually links up to whichever email source that you use. And so you can send an email directly from your inbox. You can obviously visit their website if you want to give them a call. Or again, you can save their information. And once you click Saved, all of the information that we have obtained within these profiles is now exportable into Excel for you to input into you know, uh, whatever database that you have these organizations saved with so it's convenient for you to communicate with them. Alongside the community-based organization and our student database, we also have um, the, the question and answer platform that we've created for our students to be able to communicate not only with each other to get the questions that they uh, need answered, but to also encourage you as a college partner to be active participants in communicating with the students via this platform. 
So our students are able to use the question and answer platform to get any question that they have answered. We've created it to be user friendly. And we encourage you as a college partner to be active in responding. Uh, here at staff, we are monitoring it. And so we will respond to these students. Um, as well as encouraging our students to respond to each other. But it's very simple. Um, here, Alexandria asks, you know, what, where's, where are good sources to find different scholarships? And so here at staff, we uh, provided her with a number of different resources. And then we had another student comment, uh, adding additional resources. The other really exciting piece of I'm First is our student blogging session. Um, and as some of you may be aware of, our student bloggers are also scholarship winners. So they've received a scholarship from uh, CSO and I'm First, which is funded by a grant that we uh, receive. And our scholarship winners become bloggers for us. And it's another really neat way to document first generation experiences and another really neat way for our students to hear from each other and really get that peer-to-peer -peer mentoring um, that we find successful amongst our first gen population. So our student bloggers are very active um, with blogging for us and I encourage you to you know check it out and to hear how these first gens are doing. Um, the scholarship will open up again in the spring um, so for those college partners interested in disseminating the information to your students, um, I will be sure to forward all of that information to you in the springtime uh, once the scholarship opens up again. Um, and just as a reference, um, it is a $2,000 uh, renewable scholarship for four years. Uh, this year we were able to allocate eight scholarships. So aside from the student blog, we have an e-news category. Uh, where I archive all information for you as a college partner. Um, this contains the newsletters that I disseminate monthly, as well as any uh, milestones that college partners have been doing. Um, I will uh, share those milestones and those opportunities here on the e-news section for you. So if you ever need to reference an old newsletter, um, you can do so simply through the dashboard. So the last newsletter that we did was um, open house uh, fly-in and, and visit opportunities. Um, and for those of you who haven't seen the newsletter, this is what it looks like. And this gets disseminated to um, about 50,000 uh, 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 students, high school guidance counselors, community-based organizations, college access programs, and other uh, colleges, partners and non-partners who have signed up to our I'm First listserv. As I mentioned again, the e-news section will also house other relevant news uh, for you as a college partner. Um, I will be issuing college partner newsletters that will have some tips and, and helpful advice on how you can maximize partnership, as well as any other uh, resources that you may have missed. And this is what that will look like. And so to really grow that community of college partnerships that we have and to help you uh, share best practices with each other, um, I'll start giving shout outs to institutions um, who are utilizing I'm First in a really meaningful way and have found success in doing so. Um, I'll be providing information on what's new with uh, here at CSO and I'm First as well as other partnerships um, that we've developed or just other um, information that's going on on different campuses. Again, helpful tips and advice for you to know as a college partner on how you could be maximizing your benefits of partnership and then archived in case you miss it, and then uh, certain uh, important dates to look for in terms of what's ahead. And so again, at any time, if you miss this in your inbox, it's accessible, um, archived under I'm First. And the cool thing about everything that we're doing, as you guys are well aware of, um, with the grant foundation that we won through the College Knowledge Challenge is these things are shareable uh, through our social network, through Facebook and Twitter. And so every opportunity knocks now links to our Facebook and Twitter. 
Um, college partner shout outs will be linked to our Facebook and Twitter feeds. And so it's another way for us to uh, not only promote you as an institution, but to disseminate all of the information and resources to our students to make them aware of the opportunities that you could provide them on your campus. And the last piece, um, or the two last pieces that I'll show you, one is our college partner webinars, which will be starting up again in 2014, which is coming very quickly, uh, will be archived for you through the dashboard as well. So um, I really appreciate everyone's responses um, when you received my emails notifying you of when these webinars are occurring and if you can't attend or, or whatnot. Um, I always email out a recording, but it will also be archived for you via the dashboard as well, so you can come back to it at any time. And of course, one way to really um, show your support for our first-gen population, um, as well as get your institution's name in front of these first-generation uh, prospective students as well, is to share your stories and the student stories or your colleagues' stories of who are first-generation students on campus. And we're really encouraging you as college partners to reach out to those stellar students or colleagues that you know of who have a first-gen story to submit it um, on behalf of your institution. And we're not looking for anything really promotional. We want it to be really um, engaging and um, in a language for everyone to understand and, and have it be relatable. Um, but you can simply do so by um, creating a video on your smartphone and then just uploading the link onto YouTube. And then you can come back to the dashboard page or you can come back to the landing page of I'm First. And you just simply submit that YouTube link to share your story. And if you haven't gotten the chance, um, I really encourage you to watch some of the videos of those who have already submitted um, their stories. We have a number of college partners who have done so, as well as non-college uh, partners as well. And as you may have been aware, we had um, the honor of having the Secretary of Education, Arnie Duncan, uh, show his support for our first-gen population by um, telling, uh, sharing a message of how important it is for them uh, as a first-generation student and as a student in general to attend and graduate from college. And so you can check out his message here as well. And what you see here under latest updates um, is a river stream of updated content. So if we have a new blog post or if we have a new e-news uh, 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 message going out, that'll be in a running stream here under latest updates. So I see there's a number of questions coming in. And if you give me a moment to just access them. <laughs> so I have a question that asks, are students able to see which colleges save them? Um, no, they are not uh, able to see. They don't receive a message um, indicating that a college has saved them. But what you can do um, is when you communicate with them or when you email them, you can reference that you received the information of them uh, through I'm First and through their profile in I'm First. There also is not a function that will allow you to save every student. Um, the reason being is as much as we are encouraging our students to search for you in a meaningful way to know if they're if your institution is going to be a best fit for them. We want you as a college partner to communicate with our students in a meaningful way also, and if they're going to be a good fit for you. And so we encourage you to go into their profiles um, to check out all of the information that they have provided um, to get a snapshot of you know, who this student is and a snapshot of if they will be a good fit for your institution and then to communicate out to them. We do, in the question and answer platform, correct information that is not correctly answered by other students. Um, we are constantly monitoring every uh, message that gets submitted, um, as well as there are certain features on it. Um, I will go back to it. That allows you to flag certain questions or answers. 
and we become notified of that um, right away. Um, many of you are interested in knowing if you have news related to access programs or opportunities on your profile. Um, you're asking if you can email those pieces to me directly. Yes, you may. <laughs> um, I am happy, and it makes it easier for me as well to make sure that you are obtaining uh, maximum benefits of partnership through constant communication. And so if there is anything that I need to be aware of that I'm not necessarily aware of, please, please, please do not hesitate to contact me at any time with those information. I have a question of if there is a preferred browser for the site. Um, Yes, we do prefer you to use either Firefox or Google Chrome. Um, Internet Explorer is not fully compatible with all the functionality of the I'm First dashboard. I have another question that asks, what is our official definition of first-generation students? Uh, we define first-generation students as those who have had neither parent uh, graduate from college with a four-year degree. I have another question regarding um, the exporting of information. It asks, how do we prevent duplicate exports? Um, do we delete saved students when they, once they are exported? Um, no, we don't uh, touch the content that you have within your dashboard. Uh, you manage that. Um, so I would encourage you the way it is set up right now, once you have exported information, keep those Excel sheets and then filter it um, by uh, students that you have already communicated with. Um, so once you export students and you've imported them into whichever uh, outlet that you want to use to connect with them, um, you could delete them within that Excel sheet so that you can keep a track of who the students are that you, you have communicated with. Another way that you can communicate with students outside of um, contacting them via your own personal email or through Excel is by messaging them directly through our dashboard. So this is a feature that you are familiar with um, from the previous interface of I'm First, and it's a feature that is still accessible to you as a college partner. Um, by going into this, the student's profile, as you see here, you can simply message them, and they'll receive the message in their inbox on their I'm First dashboard. So it's very similar uh, to a Facebook interface. Also, you see up top this yellow box uh, with a date. We'll be sending you messages um, through the dashboard of relevant information or important dates or any opportunity that you should be aware of. Um, and it'll come up here uh, when a new message is, is uh, sent. And you can obviously close out if you uh, receive that message. And so there's a number of different ways that we want um, you as a college partner to be able to promote your institution and your profile that you have on I'm First. Um, one of the ways that you can do so is by downloading our college partner badge. This is accessible to you uh, under media, logos and badges, if you go to the landing page. Scrolling to the bottom and and uh, downloading the I'm First College Partner Badge. And we encourage you to use that on certain materials that you may have, um, as well as linking it to um, your website, uh, your institution's website. And you can directly link your I'm First profile to the badge. So when students click on the badge, they can be directed to the profile. And if you excuse me one moment, my browser froze. <laughs> and 
And going back to uh, the College Partner Profile, um, if some of you um, aren't aware of the information that we, we do ask uh, for you to provide in the profile, the biggest thing that we stress to our students when they're utilizing I'm First and researching uh, for our college partner institutions is to look at those programs and opportunities that you provide them that's going to help them once they get to your campus. And so as you can see here, there's a number of different programs that you can put on I'm First. And it does, these opportunities don't necessarily have to be first gen specific. They can just be any opportunity that is going to be of relevant nature to supporting first gen students and underserved students and all of your student population. So as you can see here, we have pre-college prep and outreach, open house and fly and visit, summer bridge and orientation. I'll give you a full list of categories. <laughs> Scholarship and financial aid, first year experience and transition, academic advising and support, mentoring. So these are just some examples of the different types of programs and opportunities that you can highlight using I'm First. And these are the programs and opportunities that I take when I put together newsletters to um, include you as a college partner in for, full, for those of you who are full partners and are within our newsletter. And these are also the programs and opportunities that I take when I give a college partner a shout out through Facebook and Twitter. So it is very important if you can provide all of that information um, through I'm First and update that information on your college partner uh, profile within your dashboard so that I have the most up-to-date um, and relevant information for you as an institution when I'm disseminating the information about you. Um, as you can see here, the interface of the profile has slightly changed. We still do have some of those fast facts here listed on the left-hand side that gives our students a glimpse of um, what your institution may look like in terms of diversity, student success, affordability, admissions criteria, including those relevant deadlines for them to know uh, when they should put in an application as well as if there's any fees associated with, and if they have a good shot of getting into your institution. As well as your institution's contact information. Um, and as it has been the same, the school links link directly to your institution's web pages. And we do have it categorized by um, directing our students directly to your admissions page, or if you have a writing center, financial information, academic support, scholarship, athletics. And then we do provide them with um, your admissions email address, uh, your admissions address, and the admissions phone number. So that would be the contact information that you see on the left-hand side. Another cool feature that is still uh, available on your I'm First profile is the ability to link your admissions or your institution's address to Google Maps. So if our student is directed to your profile, they have easy access to get directions on how they can visit you. Going back to some of your questions as they're coming in, um, I have a question that says, how are we advertising the site to reach more students? Um, that's a great question, and it's one that I get frequently. Um, as you know, uh, October 2nd was our, our official launch of I'm First to the Nation following uh, the launch of, uh, the closing rather, the convening of the College uh, Knowledge Challenge winners from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. So since then, our database of students has grown, um, as you see here, to over 2,000 students. Um, we still communicate with our high school guidance counselors, different community-based organizations, college access programs, and provide the resources that we offer here on I'm First to them. And they become our liaisons in, in disseminating the information to their students and getting them to sign up. Um, aside from that, we have our own efforts of um, you know, uh, email, promoting um, the uh, listserv that we have of all of our registered uh, student users. Um, we try to attend as many conferences um, as we can. Uh, we, we try to visit different institutions um, as we can, um, given the staff size and the resources that we have here, um, and being that we do um, reach out to students across the nation. 
Um, our high school guidance counselors, our community-based organization contacts have been um, our strongest point. We also disseminate the guidebook that you guys are aware of, um, which you as a full partner sponsor the distribution of 25 of those copies of your choosing. And so we're able to form more relationships and partnerships with those high schools and different organizations that you provide to us um, through those contact lists um, as well when we disseminate the guidebook. Um, I have uh, other questions about the range of how many students we expect to sign up time first once it's fully live and going. Um, we have the goal of getting 50,000 students in the first year. And, you know, we encourage um, our college partners to help us in this pursuit as well. Um, when you go on recruitment travels and you know you're interacting with first-gen students, um, I've heard some stories from uh, other college partners when they communicate with these students, um, whether it be at a, at a high school fair or whether you're actually going to a community-based organization uh, yourself. Um, some of our college partners have directed these students to I'm first to sign up. And once they got those students to, to sign up, they provided them with the direct address of your I'm First profile. And they pointed those students to go directly to the profile and click that I'm Interested button. So when they got back from those travels, uh, they were able to get uh, and export the student information um, directly. And so if there wasn't time for, or if you ran out of cards or, or what have you, to get students to, to write down their email address um, in the very least, um, they were able to get that information by exporting the information from I'm first. Other ways our college partners are meaningfully uh, utilizing I'm first is definitely with this organization directory. Um, we had institutions invite um, a number of different community-based organizations uh, to an open house, and they found so much success in getting more students uh, knowledgeable of their institution in an area that they weren't necessarily um, a big name in. And so utilizing this uh, directory of CBOs and other college access programs is, is so key into disseminating more of the information of your institution and more awareness of uh, the information on, on, on first. Um, I have a question about uh, full partners who maybe have missed uh, the submission of schools to send the guided books to. Please send them to me. Um, we can still, uh, it's a benefit of partnership. Um, you are um, allowed uh, that benefit and we can send them out at any time. Uh, I have more questions about the information provided within the CBO directory um, regarding the information being updated. Um, we invite the community-based organizations who do have their profile and I'm first. Um, they are also given a user account and access to a dashboard where they could manage their profiles as well. And so um, we do uh, update the information and then we encourage those community-based organizations to also uh, extend and, and grow out their profiles as well. Um, I have another question about institutions that effectively rec replicated this focus on their own websites. Um, I'm not sure if uh, you guys are aware, uh, Bucknell University um, actually did create um, their own I'm First um, storytelling page uh, where they gathered uh, stories from their staff uh, and faculty uh, and some students on their campus to tell their story specifically. And they were able to link um, I'm First uh, directly to that page. Uh, using the College Partner Badge. Um, I have another question about bilingual options available to students and their family. Um, the guidebook uh, does have a section printed in Spanish uh, for the information. Um, the website is not uh, bilingual at the moment, um, but uh, that's absolutely something that uh, we will keep. Uh, on our radar to further explore as we uh, grow and expand I'm First.
And so the other thing that um, I'll point you out to in the time that we have, less, have left is some of these uh, features um, on the right-hand side if you have any questions about them. Um, we do have a direct access to our College Partner Press Kit here, which gives you some tips um, as well as access to the uh, badges of how you can share uh, I'm First, um, spreading the word and engaging your campus community, as well as tips and instructions for creating I'm First video, um, as well as a press release that you can download um, showing that you are in partnership uh, with I'm First and, and sharing in our mission. And so we will be updating the College Partner Press, kiss, uh, um, press Kit for you um, with information of how you could further uh, promote I'm First and your inst institution's involvement uh, to the media on your campus community, in your campus community. And as we continue to build out the capabilities of I'm First, uh, we know that there's going to continue to be some bugs and glitches, or there's going to continue to be uh, new opportunities of how we could add more features to the dashboard or new creative ways of utilizing the current dashboard. And I encourage you all as college partners, as you are using this, to please send me those ideas. Um, we are so grateful of the attention that you provide uh, with utilizing the dashboard and, the, and when you send me uh, information of things that may be gone awry or, or helpful tips of how we could expand out the dashboard. And so I would encourage you to continue to please send your feedback. Um, I have another question about um, downloading saved students uh, with not uh, being provided an Excel option. Um, I am not certain uh, what the glitch may be unless I go directly into your dashboard. Um, but right now, if you have no students saved, um, it's not going to be uh, exportable. Um, but I am happy to look further into seeing uh, if there is an issue right now with that Excel option coming up for saved students. I'm also happy to set up one-on-one -on -one phone calls with each of you individually um, to discuss more uh, your institution-specific needs and how you can maximize partnership. Um, so please feel free uh, to reach out to me at any time to do so. Um, I'm getting more questions if there's any plans to offer more languages. Um, you know, we are in conversation. Um, right now, we, are, we don't have the resources <laughs> to be able to do so um, as we continue to expand out I'm First in this first year. Um, but it is definitely something to keep in mind as we grow and expand I'm First in all of the programs and opportunities that we can provide. And so um, I'm not seeing any more um, questions coming in. Um, there will be um, a recorded version of today's webinar being sent out. Um, so if you need to go back <laughs> into this, um, you're, I'm happy to provide you with that uh, recording when it um, becomes available. If you have any problems with any, uh, any technical problems, rather, with this website, please do not hesitate to contact me directly. Uh, my email is krista at imfirst.org. Um, that's K-R-I-S-T-A at imfirst.org. Uh, um, I have some questions about uh, emails when uh, a student shows interest. Uh, the email will go to um, all of your colleagues' email addresses that you have registered as having a user account on I'm First. So it wouldn't be just the master holder, account holder. It would be uh, all of your colleagues who have an account under I'm First. So we have just about 
Six minutes left. Um, I have another question about how we advertise the I'm First websites to students nationally. Uh, we do have a promotional campaign um, that we are rolling out. Um, as some of you may be aware of, we have gotten more media attention um, with I'm First, and so that has been exciting. Um, we are um, getting recognition from the Secretary of Education as well as working on getting the First Lady, who is a first-generation student herself, to um, share her story on I'm First. Um, so we are in conversation and getting that uh, moving and having her submit a video. And so there's a number of different um, creative outlets that we have had the, the honor of being able to utilize um, in disseminating I'm First and putting it uh, in front of, uh, of uh, powerful people um, who will be impactful um, to, the, to our prospective students across the nation. I have another question about being able to include alum, I'm first videos, or just students. Anyone. <laughs> we encourage uh, current students, uh, student alumni, uh, presidents of your university, uh, faculty, staff, um, anyone who has uh, a first-gen story and a first-gen experience that they would like to share. Um, uh, as you know, as many of you may know, the storytelling project and the um, sharing of I'm First videos was inspired by the It Gets Better campaign. And so we really want that to be um, an outlet for our students to be able to view and see people whom they may not have uh, thought were first gen, as well as individuals who are just like them, and become empowered uh, with that peer-to-peer -peer mentoring. Um, so that is the main uh, mission of the Storytelling Project, is to really increase that peer-to-peer -peer mentoring that we find successful, as well as putting a face to who first gen students are. And so I encourage you to share that information with anyone that you may know. And so again, if you, uh, any of you have any other questions um, at the end of this webinar that I may not have answered, or if you're coming through technical glitches, uh, please uh, do not hesitate to contact me. I am happy to set up one-on-one uh, -on -one calls or respond to your emails accordingly. And as we wrap up into a new year, um, there are going to be uh, many upcoming opportunities for you as a college partner to assist us with webinars or Google Hangouts to students. And so if any of you are interested in being a presenter on a webinar or if you're interested in um, participating in a Google Hangout of information that we share to our students, um, I welcome your interest and I welcome your time and being able to uh, host those opportunities with us. I have another question about um, how you're able to see students who have viewed your profile. Um, at the moment, we don't have the functionality to have you view a list of students who have specifically viewed your profile. Um, right now, it is just a, a metric of the number of hits your profile has received. And so you're able to gauge um, you know, how uh, the visibility of your profile, and you're able to gauge uh, how much you want to expand the visibility of your I'm First profile. I have another question of if is I'm First uh, more popular in certain geographic areas. Um, we have noticed so far um, with launching I'm First that we do gain more students um, in those areas concentrated around major cities. And um, we are expanding and increasing our efforts to target more uh, students and populations, not necessarily around uh, those major cities. Um, a lot of that expansion is guided by our college partners. And so if we increase college partnerships um, in areas um, in, in the Midwest and in, in central, uh, in the center of the United States, 
um, your, you as a college partner really help um, us promote um, your institution and the message of I'm first to your area. And for those of you who may have missed it, uh, my email address is Krista at imfirst.org. That's K-R-I-S-T-A at imfirst.org. And if you don't have uh, a user account on I'm First um, and you um, don't have the ability to communicate with whoever may have the master account, please just email me and I am happy to set you up with one. Or if you're having trouble getting a colleague um, to, create a, to have you create a user account for them, I'm also happy to help you with that as well. So I want to thank you all for participating. Uh, in this webinar, um, I hope that the information presented was uh, informative and it helped to clarify some of the things uh, and features of the dashboard. Um, please, again, uh, if you have any further questions about um, I'm First or if you're an associate partner and want to learn more about um, the Directory of Students and the Directory of Community-Based Organizations, please uh, do not hesitate to reach out to me uh, and connect, and I'm happy to answer any additional questions that you may have. Um, I want to thank you all for your partnership. You really make the work that we're doing here uh, at Center for Student Opportunity and with I'm First Successful. Um, and it's with the great partners and institutions such as you that we're able to see success stories from our students and helping them find best fit institutions and getting to and through college. So I look forward to working all with you in the new year. And I want to wish you all a happy Thanksgiving and happy holidays to come. Take care.